I heard Rocky on with Darren the other day. I don't know why he feeds him that. Probably because Darren wears a extra, 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 extra small shirt. And I heard him the other day. Dan, you got that sound bite for me? Okay. You don't have it? All right. Anyway, hopefully we get it for you. I want to play something that I had Dave wants that on with me. Why do you keep telling? So, wait a minute. Coach, so, like, on the sidelines, <laughs> the guy wasn't standing for the national title. I heard Rocky go like this. Hey, I promote free speech here, and I promote all that. And I'm I'm in my car driving around going, who is he kidding? <laughs> I'm like, man, if I did that crap with Coach Johnson and I didn't stand for the national anthem, man, I'd be on that asthma field over next door over there in the corner. Come on, Coach. You know you don't want a guy. You know, how about this? Is it fair to say you wouldn't recruit a guy like that? I, if we knew he was like that, we probably wouldn't recruit him. But gee, you're living it. You're living in the dark ages now. Yeah, you know, I'm on a college campus, and we we promote we promote uh, civility to everybody. Okay, so again, when Muhammad Ali didn't protest in the ring, uh, Jim Brown never protested on a football field. Uh, Jabbar never protested on a basketball court. All those guys used different vehicles. They didn't well, use the guys in the locker room to do it, though, Coach. Well, uh, we can discuss that all we want. I mean, they, uh, we think they did it the right way. When Muhammad Ali decided that he would go to prison rather than go to the Vietnam War, we all celebrated that because that meant he was true to his word. So, I, I, you know, I, I don't know Kaepernick at all. I, I don't know who he is. I don't, uh, I've don't. i read what he's promoting and what he's against and all that, but I, I don't know his personality one bit, so it's – Unfair for me to judge him. How about this? That's probably 2% of what you really care about right now, isn't it? It's probably 90. How about this? 100% of what you care about is New Hampshire, right? Now we're getting into what I really care about because <laughs> Kaepernick can go fly a kite for all I care. But, uh, yeah, we, we, we've got a game this week. We're excited about it. we got fireworks afterwards. Hopefully we'll have fireworks during the game. Here's something, too, that frightens me about these kind of teams. People always go, well, these games are layups, and I always tell them, Hey, what do you know about New Hampshire? They go, I never heard of him before. I go, well, that's a frightening thing if you don't know who you're fighting. Is he a heavyweight? Is he a lightweight? What does he have? Is he have coach? Is that kind of how you go into something like this? You don't know who these guys are, and then all of a sudden you see some talent. And you're like, hey, don't go to sleep on him. So, I, I, my my question is, coaching expectation Saturday. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, I said something the other day about people that have never played before don't understand that the other team wants to win just as bad. They've worked just as hard. They're coming with expectations to win. And for anybody to displace them, say they're not worth the competition, that means he's never coached or never played. Every player in the world knows that that guy worked just as hard. That guy wants to win just as bad. They have coaches. They have scholarships. They have great tradition. Uh, they've been to 12 straight playoffs. They're coming out here to whip our butts. And, and if we're not ready for that, it could happen. How many times did you, have you seen in your coaching career desired beat talent? Uh, probably a lot. I, I don't know how many times, but more than once or twice a season, you, you see the desire of one team beat a much more talented team all the time. You see it on TV. You, I've seen it in person, which is sad to say, but I've seen it in person. Right, especially when you got a game on the flip side of this that everyone knows that it's on the chart that you have to win. That's the Cal thing. So, Coach, again, so do you talk to the guys about looking forward? Do you talk to the guys about just in that the first play, first quarter against New Hampshire? Again, you've got the experience. I'm thinking this year that probably plays a lot into it, that experience is probably going to take over for you against this uh, team this weekend. Well, we talk to the guys all the time about, you know, playing who we're playing, and it doesn't matter. We talk to them all the time about it doesn't matter who we play. It's how we play. It does, you know, they, they don't come into the equation. It's how we play, whether we're going to be successful or not. So we talk to them all the time about it. But you're right. We have a very mature football team. So I have confidence they're coming ready to play, and they know they know the stakes that are out there. But you never really know until you actually play the game. Where are they strong on New Hampshire? Their lines, quarterback. Where where where, where are your concerns with this team? Well, their offense. They they run a spread offense. Chip Kelly was their offensive coordinator way way back when they first people first started running the spread. So they're really, really good at it. The head coach is the same head coach when Chip Kelly was there. They're really good at it. They, you know, they snap the ball every 15 to 18 seconds. They've seen every defensive scheme in the world to try to stop it. So they have an answer for everything. And they score a lot of points and move the ball on everybody. 
What I heard, Coach, and I'm sure no one knows this name but you and me, I heard it's a combination between Chip and Miles Davis kind of stuff where they like to really have the rhythm. They like to get it out in pacing. Uh, they're one, two, three, Chuck, one, two, three, Chuck. They try to get 80 plays on the field. That's the kind of team we're looking at. Exactly. So you, you know as much about them as as most people do. And, I mean, we've been studying them all summer long, and, and it's really impressive. And they've got a really good program there. And now they probably don't have overall the talent we have, but they have a lot of talent in key positions that make it very difficult. When you play teams like this, usually the 22, they're good. But where a team like our team or the more talented rosters in college football or in the NFL, you beat them in depth and you beat them late in football games. That's probably the one thing. So what you want to do is probably get out to a great start against a team like this and kind of uh, kind of t- uh, temper that uh, anxiety and all, all that great expectations they have. You want to get out fast on them, I would think. I, I totally agree with you. I, uh, when you play a team like this, it's like us when we play the Power 5 guys. Our, our 22 can play with anybody. Right our on. top 22 can play with anybody. Their top 22 can play with anybody. But what happens is the depth factor comes in. An injury can ruin you. Uh, sometime late in the game, if you get someone a little beat up, that can lose it for you at the end of the game. So you're right on target. Coach, you know, I heard you say something else to Darren, too, and I loved your idea about instead of, uh, you know, having some type of preseason for the college kids, you know those old, you know those n- the nine-on-sevens that we do? And you see a lot of what they do in the spring. I think during the springtime also that instead of having spring football games, why not go up to Southern Cal and take on USC in a nine on seven or UCLA in a nine on seven where instead of having those spring practices against yourself in that area there in spring, you get a little competition getting ready to go into the fall. So your guys are all ready. You have the competition, then you have the fall, and then you're ready for the opener. What do you think of that idea? I, I'm right on the same page with you. Let's get that Let's get that campaign started. Maybe you and I together can get that done. Well, what, what I'm saying is, too, Coach, it's controlled, right? I mean, you have a controlled nine-on-seven. I think they should do this in the NFL, too. I mean, instead of these exhibition games where you saw what happened to Teddy Bridgewater, man, that is – that is just devastating. Instead, I'm not saying you could control all the injuries, but when you're controlling as much as you can out there, I think you're going to take uh, less injuries if you're doing it that way with controlled scrimmages, no? I, well, I think so, and it's much better for your team because you're not going against each other. You don't have 22 players on the field. You have 11 players on the field, right. so you have half the chances of an injury. Plus, you're seeing a lot of things that you don't give yourself, so it makes you a better football team for the year coming up. Absolutely. Hey, last question for you. Coach, What, what besides the win, what is the number one thing you want to come out of this football game with this weekend against New Hampshire? You'll be – Rocky Long, I don't know if you'll be happy because you're probably a jerk like me, which means you have no ex- – the expectations, you're always searching for it, and you're never happy and you're never satisfied. So I don't know if you'll ever be happy, but what do you want to be happy about on, on Sunday when you turn on the game film? I want to be better than we were at the beginning of last year, and that means uh, don't give up the ball. No turnovers on our side and cause a bunch of turnovers on defense, and that means we're right back in the swing of things. You know, I, I, I could play for you. I could play for you. I, I, I would we're want to play safe, for you. Then come on. No, no. I, no well, I could play. I could. Play, I don't know. I could jump over a bag right now, but I know this. <laughs> I could play for you, man. I mean, you know what? I, I think a lot of kids can play for you, Coach, and I think because you look at the kid, and you not just when a kid gets recruited, you're looking for football players. And I think you got a bunch of them this year. I think we're going to have a great year, Coach. 11 wins, 12 wins. Um, I'm expecting it. Are you? Well, we're anticipating that. I no, no, no. I don't expect anything until I see how they play in the first game. Coach, do these kids know they're going to go into these next couple games here knowing they're going to win every game that they're going to lace them up with? I believe they no, believe no. they're going into every game to win, yes. By a lot, right? I I don't know what they believe. I, this age group, I'm not sure what they believe from time to time. They believe what they want to believe. As a coaching staff, we believe we're going to win every game, and uh, it doesn't matter if it's by three points or by 30. I'm going to tell you one last thing here, and this is what. Take him to a horror movie tonight. <laughs> take him with a couple heads coming off. That's what Jimmy would do to us. I don't know why, but it was always with heads coming off. We always saw, saw, like, mass murderers. We actually saw, like, a video of a guy. Ha- I don't know. It was crazy stuff. Firing squad stuff. I mean, it was nuts. He would show us these gruesome movies. I don't know why, I, but it worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it worked for a, a certain group of guys for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Go get them, Coach. We'll be looking, man. All right, Dan. Thanks.